Hey, it's Peter here, and this video is about lost polymer casting. Now, lost polymer casting is one of my favorite activities in life. It is a lot of fun. If you're a maker, hacker, DIY type like me, and you're into 3D printing, uh, 3D printing is really cool, but it's got a limitation, which is that you can really only print in plastic. And plastic parts have their faults. They're not very temperature tolerant. They don't have a very high Young's modulus. They're not very... Uh, durable compared with metal. Wouldn't it be cool if you could print in metal? Well, if you want to print in metal, you have to spend a few hundred thousand on a very expensive 3D printer that can do that, or you can use this technique. So uh, step one of my process is to design a part. In this case, we have a trigger here that um, I've been printing these in polymer, uh, but I, I want them to be more durable. I want them to last like a lifetime, so I want to make them in metal. Uh, so you design your part. This is Google SketchUp. And then step two is to add a sprue. Now this thing sticking up out of here is the sprue. Now what is a sprue exactly? Well, it's going to displace the investment, which is the plaster in this case. Uh, and it's going to make this channel through which you can pour your metal. So your metal is going to pour down into here, and it's going to fill your part. Step three is you want to enlarge your entire model, including your sprue, by 2%. So there's a tool scale, command 9, uh, and you just pick these, in SketchUp you just pick these uh, uh, vertices uh, in the corners that are across from each other and you can change it and then you can just type in the lower right of the screen 1.02 and that will scale at uh, 2% which I've already done. Once you've scaled the model by 2% you export it to an STL file and you can print it. and so we're going to print the object with the sprue in place, enlarged by 2%. So now we're going to embed the object that we printed in plaster with the sprue sticking out. Uh, now you'll notice here that I'm holding it with my hand. You're not going to want to do that probably so long that the plaster sets um, just because you'll get tired of standing there and it's hard to stand completely motionless um, so uh, what I like to do is use a uh, some kind of contraption to try to hold the thing in place and uh, notice the sprue is sticking up out of the plaster but it doesn't have to stick up a lot because any part that's sticking out of it is going to be wasted so you don't want it to stick out a lot but you want it to stick out uh, a little bit. You don't want it to be completely sunk into the plaster. Step six is to let the plaster harden and dry. Now letting it harden is obvious, but um, equally important is you have to let it dry. If you don't let it dry enough, what will happen is there will be moisture embedded in the plaster and when you go to do the burnout, it will cause the plaster to swell. It will basically create steam inside of the plaster and blow it apart and it'll it'll screw everything up. So you don't want to do that. You want to make sure you get all the moisture out. Oh, by the way, the when you cast things, it'll in, it'll include very fine details. Like in this case, you can see the um, the label on the cup that I poured the plaster in. That's how um, how fine you can the details you can see. You can actually see the recycling mark and stuff like that. So here I'm using the barbecue pit to do the burnout and I'm I was in kind of a hurry, so I placed it sort of up on the bread shelf out of the way with the intention of uh, trying to heat it up a little bit, but not a lot, just to try to get all remaining moisture out of it. And then when I move it to the middle of the bread shelf, you notice that it starts to, uh, the sprue starts to bend over, uh, and that's just because, you know, plastic melts uh, pretty easily. The next step is that we're going to burn the polymer out of the mold. So uh, you dump it like basically upside down into the fire and um, you want to move it around sort of periodically make sure that all the plastic gets poured out and if you're using if you're using PLA which is the preferred material for this uh, it's not going to make a horrible smell and it's probably not going to be too bad for you if you're using ABS the smell is going to be nasty and uh, the styrene component of the ABS is not particularly good for you to be breathing in. It is carcinogenic, it will cause cancer, you don't want to breathe it. So you want to get away from, from this mess as, as quickly as you can. 
So once you've burned all the plastic out, uh, step eight is to pour the metal into the sprue hole. So there's going to be a hole left where that uh, plastic part was, and you want to blow on it if there's anything left in it, any any sort of charred remnants or, or charcoal or ash or anything, just blow on it and get that out of there. And then while it's still hot, I find it's beneficial to do it while it's still hot, pour your liquid metal into the hole. Now you're going to be tempted to want to just smash this thing right away and get your part out. Do not do that. Do not do that because it is still hot. It will uh, that plaster is a very insulative material, and it will keep that metal hot for possibly hours. So I like to wait at least two hours, preferably three. You know, I like to wait till it's like cold to the touch before I smash it out. If you wait too long, there's no disadvantage. But if you don't wait long enough, you will find out what happens. Your part will will smash along with the plaster. It will deform and turn into a piece of crap. Step 10, smash your plaster to reveal your part. This is probably the most fun part there is. So finally we have our 3D printed lost polymer cast pewter uh, trigger here, our part. And notice that the sprue is still attached. So uh, we need a hacksaw and we're just gonna cut that sucker right off. Now notice when we cut that sprue off that it left a kind of an ugly mark on there. The, you know, the, the hacksaw didn't do a perfect job. So just take the flat edge of a file and just run it across that spot where the, uh, where the sprue got cut off and it'll smooth it out. So after a crap load of filing, here is the part. Um, Notice it's all shiny and silver looking, whereas before it was this sort of ugly goldish tannish tinge. Um, this is what pewter really looks like, but uh, I believe the uh, tannish or goldish stuff is oxidation. So hitting it with the file for a while removed the oxidation. Now you notice there was a slight issue here. You notice there's a hole here, which is correct, but on the other side, the hole doesn't exist, and instead the top here is sort of fallen through. Um, that is a casting issue. That was not present in the 3D printed part, and uh, I don't know if this part will be usable or not, but I'm going to try uh, to repair it. In any case, um, that'll happen. Uh, oftentimes with casting, you'll have little casting issues. Sometimes it'll come out perfect, but um, uh, you just have to do your best with what you can and uh, try, try again. So lost polymer casting, it's pretty awesome. I would check it out if I were you.